a team of three full-time and four part-time communication professionals, of which I do believe we're going to meet a few of them today. So with that, Michelle, I will turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Much appreciated. Um, okay, cool. So um, Craig had invited me to talk to you guys about doing Facebook Live programming or turning what was originally a live program into a Facebook Live program. I'm going to assume quite a few of you have already been down this road already, if not, um, you know, uh, last year, certainly over the last few weeks. So um, I imagine a lot of what I'm going to say might not be new to you, but it is my goal to share with you. Um, and then for those of you that have been doing this for the last few weeks, uh, if you want to add anything at the end that um, you have found has worked in addition to or better than what we're sharing, that would be useful as well. Um, just prior to the starting the Zoom call, I did email Craig um, three documents. Um, I had told him I didn't really have time to put a PowerPoint together for this, but I think at the end of the day, the three documents would be more beneficial uh, than doing the PowerPoint anyway. So he'll be sharing them through chat um, in a bit. And um, again, please remember these are internal documents, but I'm sharing them with you to use, abuse, or toss as you see fit. Okay, so this is um, our story. We had a uh, program coming up. It was a blueberry field walk at our own um, uh, farm associated with BSU. We, host, we host it every year. The timing of the event is critical because our specialist has to give the program when the blueberries are in full bloom and that was uh, apparently a couple weeks ago for us. He um, said he really wanted the show to go on so to speak and said how about we do a Facebook live program. Um, we quickly said sure but we didn't really um, know what we were gonna do and we had to figure it, figure it out on the fly. So um, thank goodness I have an amazing team of very talented and dedicated people and they um, put their heads together and figured out what this will, would look like. By the way, I wanna preface this. What I'm gonna say, how we did this was prior to the COVID-19 um, social distancing mandate. So though the public couldn't come and we had to keep it to uh, smaller than groups of 10, this was prior to the six foot distancing. So we've, we've since changed a little bit how we're doing things and I could address that in a few minutes as well. But given that we could still gather in groups of 10 or less, um, we went out to the farm and it was specifically our videographer and our uh, named Josh Macklin, who's on the call and um, our assist our department assistant, um, Mark Klingman, and our digital marketing manager slash department assistant, Erica Shambly. And um, they tested some things out, but I, I think I get ahead of myself. Prior to testing this all out, we promoted the heck out of it. Um, we used our regular channels of integrated event promotion, which included email marketing to about 7,000 people on our Ag and Natural Resources mailing list. Um, we sent out a news release, but I have to admit the news release was a little bit more about look how we're we're um, transforming from in-person programming to virtual programming. It, what the focus wasn't so much on, hey, we're having this blueberry walk. Um, we do have a weekly e-newsletter. I did a call out in that. Um, that's mailed to about 1,300 people. And um, of course, we created it as an event in Facebook and created several posts leading up to the event to generate um, excitement uh, about it. So um, on the morning of the event, which by the way was March 26th, we posted a sneak peek video on Facebook showing the public what was coming up later that day. And um, then um, we shared it on Twitter as well. Okay, so later in the day on March 26th, we held the event live. 
And Josh is gonna walk you through the logistics of that in a moment. But before we do, I wanted to jump to impact. And that is um, one of the documents that um, I quickly put together for today's call. Um, so as you all are aware, I've stated what the problem was and I've stated the solution. So I just wanna go over a little bit what the impacts of the solution were. So last year in 2019, through CVENT, which is our registration tool, 37 people had registered, had pre-registered for the annual Blueberry Walk. A few less actually attended. I don't actually have that number, but it was a few less than 37. Now, the Facebook Live program was viewed in real time by 720 people. Um, 142 people during that time asked questions, commented, or otherwise engaged with us, engaged with us during the program. A week later, the Facebook Live, Live program was reached by 4,025 people, and the actual video itself was viewed by 1,900 people. So that represents 1,863 more people who experienced the program than the slightly less than 37 who experienced it last year. The recorded program, the program of course was recorded and it was uploaded to the specialist website page where it continues to get additional views now. Um, some, some side note impacts that we experienced was as a result of that one Facebook Live event, our VSU College of Ag Facebook page gained 248 more Facebook followers, um, like in the 48 hours after that, which represents the largest leap in followers in the shortest amount of time for us. Um, also, we garnered um, quite a bit of media attention. Uh, Virginia Public Radio, among other media outlets, did a story on us transitioning from in-person to um, virtual programming. And lastly, um, we did embed a Qualtrics survey into the Facebook comments about three quarters of the way through the program um, to try to do a program evaluation. I will admit only 27 people responded to the Qualtrics survey, but um, the feedback about the program was extremely, extremely positive. So that was cool. Um, so um, let me also, before I turn over the mic to um, Josh, just say that the other two documents that we're sharing with you, in addition to the impacts one that I was just reading off of, is um, I'm a big one for documenting processes and procedures in our department. Um, I just help it. I just feel it helps keep us all on the same page, literally. And um, anyway, so we developed one uh, for the uh, virtual programming and it does include Zoom and Facebook Live, but you have that as well. Please keep in mind it's an internal document, but I share it with you so you could see how we promoted it and what we did. And lastly, the third document is a virtual program virtual programming equipment and AV requirement list. Um, we did a, a, a little program with the uh, University of Maryland Eastern Shore a few days ago where we were just one-on-one -on -one walking them through what we did to help them and we found that they very much were interested in what equipment do we need and what are the technical AV specs that we need in order to pull this off. So given their question, um, I pulled together this sheet that, that has the uh, equipment that we have or are in the process of purchasing and the guidelines provided by Facebook specifically and from our own videographer, Josh Macklin. So that's what's in the three documents. And Josh, at this point, maybe I can turn it over to you and you could explain um, what we did for the testing portion and then the day of. Hey everybody, so what we did for the, um, the testing portion, we actually had went out to the field on the day of the scene, I mean of the day, like the actual location of the shoot, sorry, 
And um, we ran a speed test on Dr. Rafi's phone to make sure that um, we were going to have adequate connectivity while we were out there. That was like the first and foremost thing that we did. And uh, once that passed, we then went through and created like a, um, I guess you would call it like a fake uh, Facebook page where we were running our test live and we actually went live from Dr. Rafi's phone. So um, we used like um, that fake page and we had Erica, and I think a couple other people were on there um, to be able to see what was actually going on on the live, seeing if the sound was right. And we did a couple test questions with Mark and tried to figure out how that was gonna go. And we were all kind of just like figuring this out as we went along, um, so to speak. Um, but it was pretty simple, honestly. Um, it wasn't much to it once we realized that everything was working properly. We just did like a quick walk through and uh, practice walking to the different locations and, and stuff like that to make sure that everything was going to work out fine. And that was pretty much it for the testing. Does anybody have any questions? I have a question. <clears throat> yes. This is Tucker with Prairie View a and University. When you were um, doing your test, were you using a cell phone or did you use a special camera? Can you talk to us a little bit about the equipment that you used? Oh yeah, most definitely. So we use Dr. Rafi's smartphone. He uses a Samsung Galaxy, I want to say it is. I don't know exactly what version it is, but it was definitely a Samsung smartphone. And along with that, we use a lavalier microphone, which is basically, if, if anyone doesn't know what a lavalier microphone is, it's basically just a um, lapel mic that you clip onto uh, the collar of your shirt and you use that for um, an external audio source. And we then took that same microphone and plugged it into the cell phone. So that's what we use for audio. And I just had, um, um, we use a selfie stick to hold the phone. And, and the reasoning behind that was just to keep the footage uh, as stable as possible. So I just wanted to get my hands off of the phone as much as possible to kind of eliminate some of those shakes. Um, but that, that was all the equipment we used. So the lapel microphone, a selfie stick, and um, the actual smartphone itself for the camera. Josh. Philip Petway from Fort Valley State. So just the same the same jack that you would put into your phone for earphones, that's the same jack you would use for the lapel mic? Correct. So, um, and I actually have links to all this stuff. I can uh, figure out a way to send this out to you guys. I have all this stuff uh, listed out. And um, it's actually a mic that's designed for mobile phone use. Okay. So it, if, if you look on the end of it, it'll have the three notches on the uh, end of the jack, just like your standard headphones would have with the microphone attached. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Josh, this is Michelle. Do you, that is listed in the list of equipment you put together for us, right? Yes, that's listed. Okay. Okay, so you all have that in the document that Craig shared called Virtual Programming Equipment and AV List. Okay, thank you. Michelle? And Josh, I'm sorry, yes. Tucker again. Um, there was a question. I'm curious about how long the session lasted because sometimes when you're going live on Facebook, there are limitations. Josh, do you want to take that? Yeah, so the session probably was about, I want to say it was around an hour long, uh, more or less. And from my understanding, we could keep going even longer than that. But I will say that we feel that that's the sweet spot. Um, 
as as of right now. We're we're about to do another one. Actually today I think it is. So we'll we'll see how that goes timing wise. But an hour is what we did and seems to work to work fine all the way through and it also gave us the option to be able to save that full hour recording to our to the cell phone that we were recording on and we also were able to um post it so that people could view it later as well Josh could you walk us through now what you did the day of the event and um, one of the things you might want to bring up is the fact that you were sort of tethered to Dr. Rafi as you were walking through the bushes with that cord and the challenges that that brought up as well as um, we can introduce Mark at, the, at some point to talk about how we handled the Q&A. Yeah, so um, day of the shoot we made sure everything was mic'd up and we kind of um, developed a little intro sequence, uh, decided that it would be cool if um, we had, you know, a, a, a shot of the field or I guess in anybody's case, just a shot of whatever you're going to be presenting on. And then we had uh, Dr. Rafi walk into frame to start the lab. So that allowed for like a nice polished looking um, intro. And um, throughout, I just tried to make sure that I was the viewer's eyes, so to speak. So everything that I was filming, I tried to get right there in the middle of the action to, to get um, the best perspective that I possibly could. And we actually even received comments on that. People were saying, like, I guess they felt, you know, that, that they got an even closer experience than they, than they would actually in person because they were um, able to get like right there in it on the in sorry in on the action. I can't talk today. I don't know what's going on with me. But um, yeah, so we just followed him throughout his entire um, presentation, and we used um, that that same extension cable that I was telling you guys about with the lapel microphone. We used that. That allowed us to get out probably about. I want to say it's probably about like six to seven feet away from Dr. Rafi while he was presenting. And because we had that microphone, everything still sounded nice and crisp and clear. So anytime we wanted to get a wide angle um, view or something like that, I was able to kind of pull back. Now I will say um, the downside to that um, tethered situation was the fact that once we got inside of the high tunnel, we started kind of like weaving in between the different um, blueberry bushes we were starting to get tangled up a little bit and I actually had to kind of like unravel Rafi a couple times in order to um, make sure that we weren't like tangled up or that the cord didn't come detached or something like that so that was that was definitely a challenge and I actually linked a um, a wireless microphone option in there as well and that kit is really cool because it it's like an all-in-one kit so it comes with everything you need um, to to film and it actually has its own built-in uh, phone mount that you can actually plug like connect your phone inside of and then plug in um, a wireless connection and then whoever's presenting can just kind of walk around freely you don't have to even worry about any of that happening um, and yeah towards the end of the um, Dr. Rafi decided to hold all his questions to the end and towards the end of the presentation, I literally just held the camera there and did like a nice um, rule of third shot. And he answered all the questions almost like interview style. And that seemed to work really well. I think the audience really liked that portion towards the end. I have a question. Mark, can you talk about, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, this is Paul Johnson from Prairie View. Um, Michelle, earlier on you mentioned that you had a Qualtrics survey during that live session. How do you get that incorporated in a live session? Can you explain that? Yes, great segue. I was going to turn it over to Mark 
uh, Klingman, who also works in our department. He did the Q&A um, portion of the program, and he could talk about that. And Mark, I think you're also the person that did the Qualtrics survey. And um, if you did, I think Erica might have been the one who embedded it, but you're the one who I think created it. Um, but I know you'll correct me if I'm wrong. So Mark, could you answer that? Yes. Okay. Can everybody hear me okay? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. You can hear me? Yep. Okay. Yes. So my job was to monitor the discussion and the questions um, in the chat, which I don't know if you're familiar with Facebook Live, the setup. You have the video that's filling most of the screen. And then if you're on a cell phone, you will see the chat scroll up from the bottom. And then it just sort of disappears as it gets close to the middle of the screen, it just disappears. And usually you're able to scroll up, but what, what I found is that you cannot scroll up all the way. It, it will limit you uh, after a while. So I was on my phone. I was just watching the broadcast like any viewer would watch it. And I thought the best to keep, um, to capture the questions that I was going to put to Dr. Rafi when he was ready for them would, was to take screenshots, which on the phone, I think on most phones, you, sh you hold down two buttons and, you know, every phone might be a little bit different. But on the iPhone, I think you hold down the, the home button and the power button and it, it takes a screenshot. And um, later on, when I found that I couldn't scroll up all the way, I was grateful for having done that because I was able to get all the questions, not just the most recent one. Um, sometimes people are talking to each other in the chat. At. Sometimes they'll answer each other's questions. So in that case, Dr. Rafi wouldn't have to answer it. Uh, it can get a little bit confusing, but I just tried to do my best. It was the first time I did that. And um, Dr. Rafi had let me know beforehand that he didn't want questions as, as he was doing his presentation. He wanted to keep on task for the presentation. And then actually there were different parts of the field or of the farm that we went to. I think there were three main parts. So as we walked from one part to the other, that was a natural spot to ask some of the questions. So we had uh, Q&A in between the, the spots that he was showing. And then we had a longer Q&A at the end. Um, as far as the survey, I took um, the document that Dr. Rafi usually used, usually would print it. Are you there, Mark? You put it into the chat and then she also put it into the um, web page that was hosting the event. And that, that's distributed it. Does anybody have any questions? Did I go too fast? Hey, Mark, this is Lori from Virginia Tech. You kind of broke up there. We couldn't hear. You, you said you did the survey like uh, Dr. Rafi typically does it, but you put it in Qualtrics and then you um, added that to the chat. Is that correct? I took the document that he usually used as an evaluation instrument, and I just translated that into a Qualtrics survey. And then when you publish it, it gives you a link, and we just put the link into the chat and also into the web page that was hosting the event. Great. That's what I thought. It just was kind of in broken, broken up okay. when you answered the first time. Sure. Any other questions? Um, this is Craig with Oklahoma State. Uh, a quick question about, uh, and I believe I posted, hopefully I got the right one, but I believe I posted a link to the, uh, the actual video on your website. So can uh -huh. you kind of talk to us about, first of all, captioning 
uh, because that's a big topic anymore with these. And also um, kind of, have you used this anywhere beyond the actual live stream? What I know you posted on your website, have you seen it? Uh, has it been popular since that time? Uh, maybe Michelle could answer that. I, I haven't been keeping up with the number of viewers after the fact, but well, one thing I did want to mention, um, the chat during the video, after, well, I guess, Josh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but when you finish the live video, it gives you the option of saving it to your phone or publishing it as a regular Facebook video. Is that correct? It's, uh, you, you can do both. Okay, so you, so you have the option. Yes. And then if you publish it as a regular Facebook video, then all of the chat just turns into regular comments under the video. I think that's right. correct. Right. And so then Dr. Rafi, he had gotten the questions during the video, but he also went back and when someone had asked a, asked a question during the video, he went back and answered the person as if it was a regular Facebook. So really, he didn't have to answer the questions during the video. He could have just said, if he had made the decision, he could have said, I, if you have a specific question, I will reply to you in the Facebook comments. Um, which I, I don't think he did that with every single question, but he did that with, with a lot of them. So that's another option. If you didn't want to take questions on camera, you could state that, please ask your questions in the chat and I will respond to you via Facebook. That's another option. Greg, I know we didn't answer all your questions. Um, I want to just add something to what Mark said. I learned, um, over the last week or so that, well, I knew to start with that one of the benefits of Facebook Live is anybody can access it from a mobile device. You do not, or, or their computer, you do not need a Facebook account. What I didn't know is if you don't have a Facebook account and you're watching it, you don't get to see the um, chat or comments going on in the sidebar there. You just see the video. But the moment I, I spoke to one person who actually signed up for a Facebook account during Dr. Rafi's presentation, and he was explaining that the, the difference between just seeing the video and after he quickly opened an account, he could see the chat. So I just wanted to share that. Um, Erica, could you address the, the uh, captioning and maybe anything you know quickly from having the video on the Facebook, I'm sorry, on the on Dr. Rafi's page uh, regarding numbers of viewers? Yes, so as far as captioning, I just made sure that the setting was toggled to capture the closed captioning. Now, I guess a con to that is because it is live, um, as the person is speaking, especially if there's a language barrier, if they have a strong accent, it may um, pick up a different word. But I believe after the live video and once it posts as a regular video onto your Facebook page, you can go back and edit the caption setting. So um, it lets you go through line by line to edit that. Or if you wanted to republish to your page after the live, you can then up download the video and re-upload it with the edited captions. And it captures all that when you grab the code and embed it to your web page. But then you would lose the chat then, right, Erica? If you, if you downloaded it and, and re-uploaded it? You will. Um, that's the con, but if it's, I mean, if, if you're not allowed to edit part of the caption, um, but I believe, I'm pretty sure I will have to go back and look, but I'm almost positive after it posts as 
a regular post once the live stream is over you can edit the caption but you are right mark if you re-upload the video as a regular video post it you make sure that the caption is 100 percent, but you lose out on the original comment you are correct And I just want to uh, come in and add, <clears throat> this is kind of like backtracking, but I did go ahead and look it up on uh, Facebook and it says here that on the computer, the, the time limit for live streaming is eight hours and uh, time limit for live streaming on a mobile device is four hours. So unless your program is going to be nine hours, you're good to go. <laughs> But could that, I mean, so, um, sorry. no, go ahead, Mark. I was just wondering if it's beyond a certain point, you wouldn't be able to save it on your device. Your device only has so much space, but you could always save it in the cloud. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is Sinead. Hey. I want to. Yep. I'm sorry. Um, do you convert any of your videos to YouTube videos? Um, we haven't done any of the live videos converted to YouTube videos yet, but um, it would just be a matter of uploading the file that we save. We wouldn't have to like actually do any conversions or anything like that. Yeah, because I know on YouTube you can also stream as well, and some some. Some groups do the same, they do them simultaneously because like some people prefer to stream through YouTube or through Facebook Live, but I was just curious um, if there was like a difference. Yeah, so I've actually been doing some research into that. Um, the, the the first example that I have of it is is uh, my church and uh, several other churches. They right. do, they do um, multiple live streams and from what I understand, that involves um, some sort of streaming software to be able to output to multiple different, um, you know, platforms at the same exact time. And I'm not entirely sure if that can be done on a mobile device or not. Thank you. I would like to add that um, I think it was Josh mentioned that we're doing another one of these at four o'clock today, but um, this, this, this is going to be interesting. This is what we're doing at four. Um, I invite you to join us. Um, I, I have every reason to believe it'll go without a hitch, but we're adding another um, kink to the kink to it. What's happening at four o'clock is that there are two people presenting from their one house and another third person presenting from their house. And this is all going to be a Facebook live stream. And we're going to do it as a Zoom to Facebook live. And we're going to start with, again, it is Dr. Reza Rafi in his yard talking about how to grow ginger. And we have to be in his backyard to do it because it's a horticultural thing. His wife, who is also an extension specialist, but a dietitian one, is going to talk about cooking with ginger and they're gonna do that from their kitchen. The third guy has a PowerPoint presentation and he's gonna talk about some, some uh, problems that growing, I don't know, some like mold and, and grow, problems that the plant might have. There's probably a better way to say that. And he's going to do that with a PowerPoint. So how we're going to do this is Dr. Reza Rafi will start in his backyard with his wife videoing him. Then the Zoom will turn over to that other guy at his own house somewhere else. And he will do a traditional Zoom presentation with his PowerPoint but it'll still be visible, of course, on Facebook Live. When he's done, the, the two Rafis will then have had time to get in their kitchen and 
Raisa's wife, Carlin, will now, I'm sorry, Carlin will pass the camera to Raisa and he will film her in the kitchen doing whatever she's going to do. And then um, they'll open it up to questions and answers. So uh, say a little prayer for us at four o'clock that this actually works. And that's on your Facebook page? Yes. I'll put a link in um, the chat box. Are there any other, uh, thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay. <laughs> well, I think most of you know where to find us. Um, we're, uh, we're all in our kitchens and our living rooms right now, but accessible by email. Um, cell phone, et cetera. Uh, if you see the program at four and have any questions about that little extra doing it from multiple places with multiple people, just reach out to us. And additionally, if you all have any learnings um, that the group can benefit from, please, um, I, I'm not sure the best way to communicate it to the whole group, maybe send it to Craig and he can share it to the ACE community. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I did make a mistake. I, I should have mentioned that uh, Michelle also has recently won the uh, Leadership and Management LC uh, Award of Excellence. So, uh, congratulations. Hey. Thank you for doing this. So, thank by all you. means, if you have any questions or, or anything else, uh, uh, send them to me and we will kind of figure out how to, how to make this all work. A couple of really quick announcements. Next week, next Wednesday, we have a webinar. It's the State of Journalism 2020. That is not one of the COVID uh, webinars, so you do have to be a member or you uh, will have to uh, register to actually attend that. Uh, our open forum, however, is open to anyone. However, because of the Wednesday webinar, we're moving it to, to Thursday at uh, 1 p.m. Uh, Central. And then finally, uh, I have included a short survey at the, uh, in the chat box, I believe. Uh, if you'll just take a couple of minutes to, to fill that out, we are trying, trying something a little bit different as well. So uh, with that, thank you very much, Michelle, and thank your crew. Hey, it's all I kind of- I have a- I don't, oh, oh, I see the survey now, sorry. I have a quick question. Um, this is Brenda from Fort Valley State. The only way to access the four o'clock is through Facebook, Facebook Live, or will you be able to use this same connection code uh, for Zoom to, to view that? Facebook Live. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Is there any other questions? Not a question. This is, <clears throat> this is Tucker from Prairie View. Just wanted to say huge congrats to Michelle and thank you guys for today's program. Thank you, Tucker. Much, much appreciated. Thanks. This will also be available online on our website for anyone who's interested. So, and I will post the, uh, the links as well, the links to the documents that Michelle provided us. So thank you very much. We'll leave the, um, the uh, Zoom open for just a couple minutes so everyone can access that survey. And if you have any questions, by all means, just go ahead and post them. Craig, where, where is the survey? Uh, well, I went ahead and posted it yet again in the uh, chat box. I don't see it either, so. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Oh wait, now I see it, I see it right now. It, it got, Craig, it got buried it's with too. another wow. message that you put out, so it kind of stacked them and it was hard to find.
Okay, I guess I'm gonna sign off. Um, I suppose I shouldn't fill out a survey for my own presentation. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I appreciate all your help, Craig, and to everyone that's still on the line, thanks for joining. I'm gonna say goodbye. Awesome, thank you. And with that, we'll go ahead and close this. So uh, if you have any questions, like I said, just go ahead and contact me or uh, make a comment on Facebook, on our Ace, uh, fake Facebook page. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Stay safe.